Good morning and welcome to our service. My name is Dave Hansen. I'm vicar at St Stephen's Church in Preston and we're really pleased to welcome you to our service this morning. Today is uh, an all age service where uh, young and old gather together as we worship uh, Jesus together and learn what it means to follow him. And today we're thinking about what kind of a hero is Jesus? Uh, we're looking forward to later in the service, Ruth and Andy and the kids leading us in our prayers. And Irene also has an activity for us to join in with. So you might want to grab a bit of paper and a pen in readiness for that. But we are moving into week six of lockdown. We are following government's advice uh, in support of our colleagues, particularly those uh, working in care homes, those who are carers going into people's homes, and also those working in hospital. And our thoughts and prayers are very much with those who are unwell at this time, or those who are grieving the loss of a loved one. So although our buildings, our church buildings are closed at this time, our prayer is that our hearts would be full of praise and the presence of Jesus this morning. And we're going to begin our time together by saying some words. Please join in, uh, in the word, with the words in bold text. We are not once a week friends. We are the family of God. We are not a cosy club. We are the body of Christ. We are not strangers meeting. We are temples of the Holy Spirit. We're not here by accident. Our Father has called us to worship. We are not just filling up an hour. Jesus wants us to know him better. We are not just going through the motions. The Holy Spirit has some special words for us. So come, draw near to God and God will draw near to us. Amen. We're going to sing our first song together. Lord, I lift your name on high. Yeah. 
we're going to take a moment now to say sorry to God and this morning we're going to be using our right hand to help us to do that so if you'd like to join in with the actions at home if it's helpful uh, for you uh, please uh, follow my actions first of all we're going to make a fist Lord we're sorry for the times we have got angry with other people now point away from yourself Lord, we are sorry for the times we've blamed others and seen things wrong in others without recognising how much is also wrong in us. Now close your hand and put it close to your chest. We are sorry for the times we've kept things selfishly to ourselves and not been prepared to give to those who need our help. Now put your hand over your mouth. We are sorry for the foolish words we've spoken, which have hurt other people. Now put your hand over your eyes. We are sorry that we've deliberately chosen not to see the good things we could have done to help other people. Now put your hand over your ear. Lord, we're sorry for the times we've not listened to the cries of those who are poor or suffer injustice. Now hold out your hand in front of you. Jesus says, if you are tired from carrying heavy burdens, come to me and I will give you rest. So we bring all that we are to Jesus, all our sins and all our failure to love. Thank you, Jesus, that you died for us so that we might be forgiven and start a new life in the power of the Holy Spirit. I'd like you to take your finger and trace on your open hand the sign of the cross to remind us of God's forgiveness. Amen. We're now going to listen to our Bible reading, which is from John chapter 10, verses 11 to 30. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand is not the shepherd and does not own the sheep. So when he sees the wolf coming, he abandons the sheep and runs away. Then the wolf attacks the flock and scatters it. The man runs away because he is a hired hand and cares nothing for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my sheep and my sheep know me. Just as the father knows me and I know the father and I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that are not of this sheepfold. I must bring them also. They too will listen to my voice, and there shall be one flock and one shepherd. The reason my father loves me is that I lay down my life, only to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have authority to lay it down, and authority to take it up again. This command I received from my father. The Jews who heard these words were again divided. Many of them said, He is demon-possessed and raving mad. Why listen to him? But others said, These are not the sayings of a man possessed by a demon. Can a demon open the eyes of the blind? Then came the festival of dedication at Jerusalem. It was winter, and Jesus was in the temple courts walking in Solomon's colonnade. The Jews who were there gathered round him, saying, how long will you keep us in suspense? If you are the Messiah, tell us, plainly. Jesus answered, I did tell you, but you do not believe. The works I do in my Father's name testify about me, but you do not believe because you are not my sheep. My sheep listen to my voice. I know them, and they follow me. I give them eternal life, and they shall never perish. No one will snatch them out of my hand. My Father, who has given them to me, is greater than all. No one can snatch them out of my Father's hand. I and the Father are one. Have you noticed how everyone seems at the moment on the lookout for a hero, whether it be our local papers or national TV or social media? We're on the lookout for people who are acting selflessly, giving their time and resources for other people. 
And there's no doubt that we're seeing a wave of generosity as communities are coming together at this time. And we're also seeing our NHS workers, carers working in residential and nursing homes, and those who are going out to care for people in their own homes, selflessly giving of their time, often at great risk to themselves. And we honour them for doing this. But we know that most of them would just say, well, I'm just doing my job. It's extraordinary times, but I'm just an ordinary person doing what I do to the best of my ability. But what about Jesus? Could we call him a hero? As we watched the video this morning for our Bible reading, did you notice that Jesus was in the city of Jerusalem? He was walking in the temple and he came across some of the Jewish leaders who began to ask him some questions. We learned that it was actually during the Feast of Dedication. And this was a Jewish uh, celebration of what we now know as Hanukkah. And this festival celebrated the action of a Jewish hero called Judas Maccabeus. Back in 170 BC, the king of Syria loved Greek culture and Greek religion. And he decided that across his empire, he wanted everybody to be worshiping in the same way. So he erected a, a, an altar for the Greek god Zeus in the temple in Jerusalem. And this enraged the local Jewish people. And this is where our hero jumps in. A man called Judas Maccabeus with his brother led a successful revolt against the Syrians. And they celebrated their victory with eight days um, as they re-consecrated the temple in Jerusalem. And to this day, the Jewish people celebrate that occasion um, with the festival of Hanukkah. If we fast forward from that original time when all this happened to the very day that we're reading about in our Bible reading, we can see that Jesus is walking into the temple on the feast day of Hanukkah. One of the religious leaders says to him, how long are you going to keep us guessing? If you're the Messiah, then tell us plainly. You see, the Jewish people were looking for a hero, one who would lead a revolt, a bit like Judas Maccabeus had done years earlier. Someone who could release them, this time from the power of the Romans. Jesus' response is really interesting. He says in verse 25, I did tell you who I was, but you didn't believe me. And then he adds, J just look at all the things that I've done. He's reminding them both of what he said and also the miracles that he's performed. But Jesus wasn't the kind of Messiah, the kind of hero that they were looking for. He didn't meet their criteria. So what kind of hero is Jesus? Is he someone who can make sense of some of the big questions that we're thinking about right now? Is he someone who can give us hope to face the future? Is he someone who can tell us about life after death? We're going to find out what kind of hero Jesus is. But to find out, we have to be good at listening. So Irene has got an activity which helps us to see how good we are at that. In our Bible reading today, uh, Jesus says, my sheep listen to my voice. And in that context, Jesus is referring to himself as the shepherd and us, his followers, as the sheep. And we need to listen to him. So we need to have good listening skills. So I've made a recording of different sounds around our home for you to identify. There are eight of them. Some are easy, some are a bit more difficult. So let's see how we get on. Number one. Number two. Number three. 
Number four. Number five. Number six. Number seven. Number eight. Right, let's see how well you did. Number one, nice and easy start, the doorbell. Number two, a bit more difficult. That was the lawnmower, that was the day I persuaded Dave to cut the lawn. Number three, opening a can. Four, birds singing in the garden, although not these particular birds. Number five, washing your hands and singing happy birthday which is what we're all supposed to be doing at the moment, isn't it? Number six, the telephone. You've got a clue at the end there with the answer phone message coming in. Now number seven, that's a bit more difficult. So well done if you got that, the kettle boiling. Number eight, probably the most difficult one, the washing machine spinning. So if you are a super listener and got eight out of eight, well done to you. But the really important thing here is not that we're excellent listeners of sounds in our homes, but how well we listen to Jesus. Thanks, Irene. And we're going to continue to think about listening to Jesus. But I want to remind you of the question we're thinking about, and that is, what kind of hero is Jesus? Well, let's listen to what he says in verse 27. Jesus says, my sheep listen to my voice. I know them and they follow me. So Jesus is saying three things. The first is, my sheep listen to my voice. I was talking on the phone this week to Absom, one of our church family. He comes from a small village in Namibia. And one of his jobs was not to look after sheep, but look, to look after the family's goats. I asked him what happened if at the end of the day, one of the goats was missing. And he said, well, we'd have to go and search. We'd have to go to the nearby villages and ask if anyone has seen a stray goat. They asked him um, how he called his goats. How did he, uh, um, at the end of the day, how did he shout out to them so that they knew they needed to come to him? And he told me the words that he used in his language. So I said, does that mean that if anyone else used those same words, um, would the goats come to them? And no, he said straight away, because the goats would not know that person's voice. See, this is what Jesus is like. He calls people by name. They recognise his voice and they follow him. I wonder if you've had that experience of hearing Jesus call you. People hear the voice of Jesus in different ways. For some, there is an aching, longing, emptiness in their lives that nothing else can fill. Some people are just overwhelmed by the beauty of the uh, world around us and long to know the creator of that world. 
For others, it's a realisation that Jesus really is who he says he is. Some people even have a vision of Jesus. And for some, it's a longing for forgiveness that Jesus offers. It will be different for each one of us, but when you hear his voice, you will know that it's him that's calling you. And of course, the main way that we go on hearing the voice of Jesus is through reading our Bibles. And everything else that we sense that he may be saying to us, we, we test against what the Bible says to us. The second thing that Jesus says is, I know them. Jesus is, is saying, I'm like, a, I'm like a shepherd, you're like the sheep, and, and we have this relationship. Do you remember um, a few months ago hearing the story about Norman the Lamb? Norman was born in Scotland and uh, he had a bit of a difficult start to his life. So his shepherdess spent a long time bottle feeding, feeding him and looking after him. Eventually, um, although she'd become quite attached to little Norman the lamb, she decided she needed to sell him. And then as she thought about it, she was, she was sad that she'd sold Norman. So she decided she'd go and search for him to find him again. And she found him living on a farm 400 miles away. And when she got to the field where the flock of sheep were, she could spot Norman straight away. So she put on her pink hat, the one she always used to wear when she went out into the fields with her sheep. She got out of her jeep, stood at the side of the field, and before she could even call out Norman's name, like a bullet, he shot across the field and came to her. Now I wonder if anyone else had stood there, even put the pink hat on and called out Norman's name. Do you think Norman would have come to them? No, I don't think he would have done because he wouldn't have known them. You know, Jesus calls us into a relationship with him. One where we are fully known and yet fully accepted. Isn't that amazing that someone could know us so well and yet accept us as we are? The call of Jesus brings us into a new relationship with him where we begin a lifelong adventure of getting to know him more and more. The third thing that Jesus says is that the sheep follow the shepherd. And he says the ones that he calls to him, well, they follow him as well. So we hear that Jesus' call is, is not just the start of a new relationship. It's also the beginning of a new way of life. You know, there's a difference uh, between the way um, shepherds look after their sheep here in the UK and the way that shepherds look after their sheep over in Palestine, where um, Jesus lived. In the UK, um, shepherds tend to drive their sheep from behind. So if you go out in the countryside, often you can see um, a shepherd with a dog and they're, they're, they're behind the sheep and they're driving them forward. But um, in Palestine, what they do is they call out the sheep's names and then the shepherd walks in front and the sheep walk behind. There's a beautiful picture of this in Psalm 23, uh, one of the most well-known psalms or parts of the Bible, where it says, the Lord is my shepherd. And the shepherd leads uh, his sheep to uh, green, where the, where the grass is green and luscious. He makes them sit down and rest. He takes them by still waters. But then he leads them through a dark valley where the terrain is difficult, where there are dangers all around. The shepherd leads the way. You see, he's been on that path before. We have a shepherd who, call, who calls us to follow him. He knows us and he will transform our lives with his presence if we ask him to. 
and he would lead us in our lives. Is this the kind of hero that you are looking for? We're going to sing now um, a song um, which the children always enjoy uh, singing. I know some of the adults too. They've got, it's got some actions. It's um, our God is a great big God. So the actions are our God is a great big God. Our God is a great big God. Our God is a great big God and he holds us in his hands. Our God is a great big God. Our God is a great big God. Our God is a great big God and he holds us in his hands. Our God is a great big God. Our God is a great big God. Our God is a great big God and he holds us in his hands. He's higher than a skyscraper. He's deeper than a submarine He's wider than the universe And beyond my wildest dreams And he's known me and he's loved me Since before the world began How wonderful to be a part Of God's amazing plan Our God is a great big God our God is a great big God Our God is a great big God And He holds us in His hand Our God is a great big God Our God is a great big God Our God is a great big God And He holds us in His hands He's higher than a skyscraper He's deeper than a submarine Wider than the universe and beyond my wildest dreams. And he's known me and he's loved me since before the world began. How wonderful to be a part of God's amazing plan. Our God is a great big God. Our God is a great big God. Our God is a great big God and He holds us in His hands. Our God is a great big God. Our God is a great big God. Our God is a great big God and He holds us in His hands. 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 We've been thinking about what kind of a hero is Jesus and he isn't what people expect. He's the kind of shepherd that lays down his life for the sheep. You see Jesus gave his life up for us by dying on a cross so that we might be forgiven and find new life in him. We see in these next two verses, verses 28 and 29, that there are two promises um, that he gives to those who respond to his call. First of all, we see that he gives them eternal life. Now we know that eternal means something that goes on forever and ever and ever. So for the Christian, for the person who's put their trust in Jesus, that means that death is not the end. As Christians, we have the promise of eternal life after we die, of being with Jesus forever and ever. Isn't that a wonderful promise to have as Christians? But there's another promise that he gives in these verses. He says, no one will snatch them out of my hands. Now I want to show you um, what that means and I'm going to need some help from Irene as I show you. I've got some um, Irene, if you'd like to come here. and um, I've got two coins here. And I want you to, you to imagine that we are like one of these coins. And so I want to keep these coins safe. So I, I want to choose a safe place to keep them. So I think I'll put the first one here. That should be safe there. And Irene, I'm going to ask you to, can you look after that one and keep it really safe in your hand? 
That's so good. Okay, now I wonder which one um, is, which coin is going to be the safest, the one that's in Irene's hand that she's holding on to, or the one that's on this table. Now I guess it's fairly safe here because people aren't really coming into our home at the moment because of the restrictions. But I guess easily this, this it could, the table could be knocked, the coin could roll on the floor, go under, it's still rolling now, you're going to go underneath another bit of furniture and just get forgotten and lost and never found for a long time. But what about the coin that's in Irene's hands? I'm gonna see how safe it is. I'm gonna see if I can get this coin out of Irene's hands. Here we go. Oh, you've got a strong grip, Irene. Do you know what? No I, I can't get the coin out of Irene's hands. Thank you, Irene. She's taking the coin as well. And you know, that is a picture um, of what Jesus is saying here. He's saying when we give our lives to him, when we put our trust in Jesus, then he holds us in his hands and nothing can take us out of his hands. Now that doesn't mean that we're never going to face any difficulties or problems or troubles in our lives. But it does mean that amidst all of that trouble and difficulty, we know that Jesus is holding on to us. And you know, even if we, at some point in our lives, choose to go away from him, and so that we don't enjoy that closeness of, and his protection with us, you know, there's always a promise that Jesus offers us for us to come back to him, to return, to be in his hands. Isn't that a wonderful promise for us to have today? Let's be reassured this morning that the risen Lord Jesus longs to speak to us. He longs for us to know him. He wants to lead us in our new lives with him. He gives us eternal life and he holds us in his hand. Andy and Ruth are now going to, with the children, are going to lead us in our prayers. And we're going to be thinking about how Jesus calls us to be like him. Good morning. As you can see, Ernest here is just like any other little baby. But on a Sunday morning, he becomes a superhero. Would you like to be a superhero too? Yes! Now we can all be superheroes when we pray. Here's how. First of all, every superhero needs a cape. Now they need a cape because it provides them with protection and comfort. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you that in such uncertain times, your word and your love is a comfort to us. We ask for your protection over the world, our nation, and particularly our community here in Preston. Protect our families and our neighbours, especially those that are vulnerable or isolated. Amen. Amen. Now the next thing a superhero needs is a pair of these. These are goggles. Now the goggles go on our superhero to protect their vision and to help them focus. Let us pray. Lord, we ask that you would grant our leaders in government and policy clarity of vision as they look forward and help us navigate our way to a life beyond lockdown and the virus. And whilst we ask for vision for our leaders, help us personally to use our time to focus on you. Help us not to lose sight of Jesus who shared our joy as well as our sorrow. Amen. Amen. Now the third piece of kit for a superhero, probably the most important one, is a pair of underpants. Now they provide our superhero with vital support where it is needed the most. On they go. Okay, how do they feel, Cyril? Good. Let us pray. 
We thank you, Lord, for all those that give us vital support. We think especially at this time of doctors, nurses and carers, but also of those that help our supermarkets to run, those that bring our mail, those that collect our rubbish, and all those working too to keep our vital services running. Help us not to take those that support us for granted, to remember to take time to say thank you and to offer words of support and encouragement. Amen. Amen. Now the next thing a superhero needs is a pair of gloves. Where do our gloves go? Hand. Yes, and they protect their hands so that they can use their hands to help others. Hand. Let us pray. Lord, we acknowledge you are a powerful God. You hold all of creation in your hands. We thank you that those hands are safe and secure. With our own hands, help us to understand how we can be of practical help to those around us. Grant us opportunities to express your love in a practical way. Helping a neighbour with their shopping, calling someone that might be lonely, or any task, no matter how small it might seem, to lighten another's burden. Let our hands be your hands. Amen. Amen. And finally, every superhero needs a good pair of boots. And these are to help them walk. Can you put them on, Doris? Let us pray. Lord, help guide our path. Help us to place our feet in your footprints. Lord, we ask that you would walk with us. This week, would you go before us? Be there in our conversations, be there in our actions, be there in our opportunities, be there in our moments of exasperation and our moments of exhilaration. Lord, stand with us as in our moments of sadness and sorrow too. This week, we think especially of Julia and Steve. We think of Sandra and all those we name in our hearts now. Lord Jesus, there is no greater hero than you. Thank you that through faith and trust in you, our eternal future is secure, no matter how perilous the present might seem. Amen. Amen. So now we're fully kitted up as superheroes. We can go and carry on praying. Oh, but what's that? I think I can hear somebody calling for help. No problem.
we've come to the end of our service. Uh, thank you so much for uh, joining in our worship today. And if it's the first time you've watched this service, perhaps it's been recommended to you by a friend or neighbour, uh, and you just like to make contact with us, um, please do, either through our Facebook page or through our website. We'd love to be in touch with you. And if you've got any questions, please do send them to us. Huge thank you to the Hiron family for leading us in our prayers. And once again, to Irene and Chris, who've worked so hard to make this possible. Thank you. A final prayer of blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. May the grace of Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Spirit